the program a big thank you and welcome to all that are watching from nigeria and also in diaspora thank you for subscribing to flip tv uh today we are going to be looking at uh, some of the happenings in nigeria today and i have with me the nigerian tribune and also i do have the nation's newspaper yesterday the senate passed uh, so many bills in the house and we have uh, them captured in the papers uh, this morning uh, let's look at a uh, 41.2 million vaccine doses coming this month 41.2 million vaccine uh, doses coming this month uh, government government ops covid-19 battle media bill on hold at house of representatives media bill on hold at house of representatives sponsors back down sponsor of the bill backs down nigeria lucky to remain despite challenges says buhari nigeria lucky to remain despite challenges says buhari kaduna 222 killed 774 kidnapped in three months 222 killed in kaduna and 774 kidnapped in three months i neck job on a chase rejection good for democracy in neck job on a chase rejection good for democracy the main headline on the nation's newspaper this morning uh, we have senate bill proposes 10 years jail for hate speech senate bill proposes 10 years jail term for hate speech and 20 years imprisonment for ballot box snatchers in past electoral offense commission bill 20 years imprisonment for ballot box snatchers in past electoral offense commission bill House asks Buhari to fight insurgencies with mercenaries. House asks Buhari to fight insurgency with mercenaries. Insecurity holding down development, says President. Insecurity holding down development, says President. Uh, uh, Governors Lord Tinubu for refurbishing Arewa House Library. Governors uh, Lord Tinubu for refurbishing Arewa House Library. Okay, punishment prescribed for electoral rules violation by voters, electoral officers, party officials, judicial officers, and security personnel. So the 20 years uh, jail imprisonment for ballot box snatchers is, is passed uh, by the Electoral Offense Commission bill. It involves voters, electoral officers, uh, party officials, judicial officers, and security personnel. So anyone found culpable of this offense, uh, uh, whether you're a voter or you're an electoral officer, a party official, a judicial office, officer, officer, or a security personnel, you are in for 20 years imprisonment uh, for that offense. Let's move over to the Tribune, Nigerian Tribune, this morning. Above the mass head, or your judicial panel treats one and three petitions on police abuses. Or your judicial panel treats 163 petitions on police abuses. That is from the NSAS uh, protest. Uh, 163 petitions on police abuses. Bingi's deliberation on final report. Women demand 10 million compensation for police brutality. Panel set to forward recommendations for remedial measures to marking the panel set to forward recommendations for remedial measures to marking the hard knocks for national assembly federal government over proposed mpc mbc amendment bills hard knocks for national assembly federal government over proposed mpc mbc amendment bill you can't gag me there which defeated uh, which defeated the military you can't gag media which defeated the military that is from kokori is saying that uh, the government cannot gag uh, the media that defeated the military during the time uh, of uh, the uh, abachas of this world and also uh, the babangidas of this world proposed amendments unacceptable aroguna day proposed amendments unacceptable aroguna day we are suspending process for more consultation that's the sponsor of the bill is saying we are suspending process for more consultation Governments meet today. Governors meet today on PIB, Legislative Judicial Autonomy, Executive Order 10. Governors meet today on PIB, Legislative Judicial Autonomy, Executive Order 10. Senate moves to amend JAM Act to peg UTME at uh, uh, age limit at 16. Senate move to amend JAM Act to peg UTME at uh, age 16. Uh, panic in Unilag as students in hostel contract COVID-19. Panic in Unilag as students in hostels contract COVID-19. The main headline on the Tribune this morning. Ballot box snatchers risk 20 years in jail. That's Senate. 
ballot bot snatchers risked 20 years in jail from Senate. Passes bill to establish electoral offenses commission. Uh, three feared killed in class between military men suspected towers at Ladipo Market. Three feared killed in class between military men suspected towers at Ladipo Market. We are not aware of incident. That is police saying that we are not aware of the incident. I'll use all necessary means to end insecurity. That's from Buhari. I'll use all necessary means to end insecurity. It says Nigeria lucky to remain despite challenges. Nigeria lucky to remain despite challenges. Chidima must not die in police custody. Reps one police. Chidima must not die in custody. Reps one police. Once media trial parade of suspects stopped. Uh, I next post federal character principal knocks off Onochi. Senate confirms five. Her rejection. Victory for Nigerians and democracy. That's from the PDP. Let's move on to our review this morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Matthew. Good morning, Mr. Christian. Okay, I want to go. Uh, the most important uh, here this morning for me is that Senate proposed uh, 10 years jail for hate speech. Hate speech? Yes. It be, 10 years jail term for hate speech. It depends on what they mean by hate speech. We've been saying this thing over and over that there are other relevant sections of the Constitution that have addressed what they call hate speech. We have libel, we have slander. So I don't know what they want to achieve by still talking about hate speech. That you can try somebody based on libelous uh, statements or when somebody commits uh, a slander against you. So I hope it is not another uh, intention to gag the press, to intimidate the uh, press, and to stifle freedom of expression and freedom of speech. I hope that is not the intention. Because ordinarily, there is no point looking for how to make laws against hate speech when we already have laws that address it. So for me, I think we need to interrogate that inter um, intended bill to see all the aspects of sec uh, proposed sections and any area where it is pre presumed or where it has tendency of gagging the press, it's good that people start speaking up against it on time. Okay, Just like as Nigerians and the media openly spoke against the broadcasting MBC and the other um, uh, MPC, MPC uh, proposed a uh, uh, bill. And from all indication, even the sponsor of the bill have said that he would join the bill for more consultation. It means he's already been faced by criticism and he cannot stand it. So in the same vein, I think it is good that we know all the necessary uh, sections of, the con of that proposed bill so that we can interrogate it and know areas where it intends to guard the press so that we can start engaging the National Assembly on time for the purpose of resenting that obnoxious uh, okay, okay. bill. Let's look at this. Any person who uses hate speech to stir up ethnic, religious, or racial hatred, social or political insecurity or violence against anyone or group of persons is liable to 10 years in jail. Uh, we need to interrogate it beyond that because you are just saying hate speech. We need to know what comes to hate speech. This whether whether to them stairs of ethnic uh, that is not the issue that is not that is not the issue because what you may term as hate speech may be infringing on somebody's freedom of right of expression so we need to know that's why we need to uh, interrogate that all the relevant section of that proposed bill to know whether it is it, its intention is to infringe on people's freedom of expression and freedom of speech so we need to interrogate it further beyond what you have just read Okay, okay. Uh, let's look at um, ballot box snatchers risk 20 years in jail. That's it. Are you going to applaud that bill? Uh, it is a good thing if you sanction people who snatch ballot box. But again, beyond ballot snatching, what are people who manipulate results at the highest level? Because by the time you are transmitting results from local government, from what? It starts from units, the pulling units, to the work coalition center. From the work coalition center to local government coalition center. From that local government coalition center, you have um, the federal constituency and senate before state, before you get to the federal. So many atrocities, so many manipulations happen between the stages. So what offense, what law are you proposing to punish people who use pen to manipulate the figures? 
And again, beyond that, I think what is more important is electronic transmission of results. Which some senators, particularly in Dumen, okay. is against. Because the way it stands, if you allow, if you make laws to transmit elect election results electronically, it will, it will take away all this issue of ballot snatching, ballot stuffing, and all that. Because if from the point of pulling, pulling units, the result is transmitted to a designated site, all the intention of people to slide the ballot box after the pulling unit would be would be would, 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 would have been checked. So if you address that, it will already it will, it will address all the issue of electoral malpractice. So for me, instead of even looking at um, jailing somebody 20 years for that purpose of ballot, yeah, 20 years for ballot snatching. If you allow transmission of results from the pooling units, it will discourage people from snatching banner buses. So I think the senior should give it because for, by our standard, the electorate are supposed to be arbit the arbiter of to decide who becomes the governor, who becomes the local government chairman, who becomes the senator, who becomes the house of rep member, who becomes the, and who becomes the president, as the case may be. But by the time you allow people who manipulate the system to have their way, you have taken away that mandate from the electorate. It now becomes a question of who has the uh, uh, who who has monopoly of violence. Will not determine who wins an election. So that mandate should be reserved for the electorate. And the only way you can reserve it is to safeguard the mandate of the people. And the only way you can safeguard it is to allow electronic transfer of results from the polling units before it gets to stages where it can be manipulated. That is why I say it. Okay, House asked Buhari to use uh, mercenaries to fight insurgency. Is Mr. President supposed to be waited to be reminded of what to do? That is why we see him as somebody who there is a dereliction of duty on his part, negligence. Because I think he's too comfortable in that Asu rock to the extent that he do not realize and know that Nigerians are suffering. That even as we speak, you have Nigerians who are languishing in criminal uh, um, kidnappers den. Look at what is happening in Kaduna. Zamfara. I think Kasuna is not as serious as even uh, Niger. Especially where even as we speak, you have up to 100 or 200 persons in captivity. So I think it should have been a thing of concern for Mr. President. He needed not to be, he needed not to wait until he's being reminded. How can you be waiting to be reminded that you need to protect life and property? And the Constitution have told us abundantly, it made it abundantly clear that the welfare, the security and welfare of Nigerians shall be the primary purpose of governance. And when this is not forthcoming, you should know that you have failed in the major area of governance. So I don't think Mr. Mr. President need to wait for people to remind them that he need to protect life and property. Okay. It is a mandate that people for him to do by the constitution and it's fundamental. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Thank Martin. You. I'm Mr. David. Yeah, good morning, Mr. David. Good morning, Mr. Christian Chuku. Now, uh, media bill on hold at the House of Representatives, and now we are seeing that uh, Senate uh, bill proposes 10 years jail for hate speech. I want to respond to that. <laughs> Just like what Pastor said, what do they mean by hate speech? I don't know. Hate what... speech is any. <laughs> Thing that stirs up ethnic, religious, or racial <laughs> hatred, social or political insecurity, or, viol or violence against anyone or group of persons. So now, are they not saying people should not, people should not air their own opinion when things is not going right in in society, or or when the killing is too much, people should not contribute, or or people can no longer criticize the government of the day because this is to me i think this is what's not necessary you know you see if you guys are doing the needful people will not come out and condemn you guys people will not come out and condemn these lawmakers people will not condemn the what uh, executive arm of the government if you guys are what uh, up 
to the tax. It is due to the fact that you guys have neglected what you ought to do. That is why you guys, you guys are always, that is why these people are always afraid of criticism. Because in the right sense, if you as a governor mm, swore an oath to always defend the people at every given time, if you've done the need to, nobody would come and start criticizing you. And then see, by so doing that, you, you don't, there's no point of coming out with this speech, speech, speech. Speech is not necessary to me. There are a lot of pressing issues. Yes, I see the election. Who are proposing this same law? Those people, those persons that snatch ballots board. They should also, uh, those positions that ask them to start ballot board should also be what? Apprehended, arrested, and be tried in jail until when we have an electronic means of transmitting results. This issue of ballot box will not stop. You, opposing jail time, will not stop it. Why don't you prefer solution? Now, what do we do to stop this ballot snatching? Let every uh, electoral, uh, let every what, see, election be what, the result be always transmitted. Electronically. Electronically. That is the only option. Then, because they know that, see, if they should if they should propose this kind of law, most of them might miss out. That is why you see them proposing jail time for the what, ballot, ballot snatchers. And in return, these politicians make use of these people. Use them to snatch the same ballot box. I mean, you don't use them now. I'm trying to use them. No, you, 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 too, you, don't, you don't make use of them. These same people that are proposing this law make use of these hoodlums to snatch this, to snatch balance boss. And now, and now they have, they are, they are, they are, they are not proposing data for them. Let every ele election result be what transmitted ele electronically. That is the only way forward. Or else we we'll get issues, 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 and every day, this balls, this is balance snatching. It will not stop. Even though they passed the law, even if yes, even even if the law it, it has been passed, yes. Now let me tell you something. The place I served in, I I served. There was this by election coming up. The man was telling us, "You we the coppers." Then it was like, "You guys should safeguard this ballot board." I I am not saying you guys should look for me. Indirectly, what he was trying to tell us then, then that comes in, we should look for him. That was what he told us. And then now, uh, the man asked what, and at every given time, he was he was giving us money, 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 money. So tell me, do you think this balance snatching? It, it will not stop. Even before the end of the election, people were, people were even shooting. People were sh shooting to the air. And now guys came and also snatched the balance box. It will not end. The best way is for them to transmit uh, election results uh, electronically. That is the only best option. Okay, how is asked Buhari to fight insurgency with machineries? <laughs> so, so the house are, are not telling him what to do again. Did they say that yeah? insecurity is holding down development? <laughs> this president. But, so, so are the house members telling him what to do? What is the function? Advise the president. Advise the president. Uh, advise the president on the matter of security. Uh, 
Eh? What is the function of the president? What is the function of the president? Now, prominent Nigerians have come out to always advise the president, but see, as he uh, eating to the advice. Mr. President, to me, does not want to be advised because he fully, because now he knows what's happening in the country. He knows that what he, there is what insecurity issue in the country. He should not wait for the National Assembly or the, or the, uh, or the lawmakers to always tell him what to do. And now, even if he have, even if those ones have what, advise him, would he adhere to their advice? That is another question. Would he know? Now, why don't you say, say, seek external, uh, sorry, external, uh, help. external help? People, so many prominent Nigerians have said it on countless times. What has he done towards it? I think Mr. President likes the way Nigerians are suffering. Yes, he likes that. And the way those ones in the north, whereby they are kidnapping people. I think Mr. President is happy with it because now, to them, it's a lucrative business. So, sir, I think Mr. President is very happy with that. Because if I'm happy with it, I just, I, I see the reason why the President have not taken um, a step for him to have end insurgency. And don't forget, the President is a major general, a retired army personnel. He knows, he knows what to do. He truly, he wants to end his insurgency. I think at this point that Mr. President is also making gains from this kidnapping. He's making gains. Yes, gain. Yes, because people, when you kidnap, ransom will be paid. Who, who, who are those paying ransom? Federal government is also paying ransom to them. Yes. So I think to, to some extent, he's also enriching his own people from the north. That is why he does not want an end to this insurgency because he truly he wants an end to, to this insurgency. He does not take federal government anything. He does not cause for them he does, he does not cause them anything to end what insurgency. Today today he, in Nigeria I think Buhari has his chest in this issue of what insurgency. That is why he has not he has he has, he has, he has, he has not deployed any any needful techniques to end this insurgency. Okay. Thank you very much Mr. David. Uh, Mr. Lucky, Mr. Lucky, good yeah, morning. Good morning, my brother. God bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless the viewers. Bless people from all over the world. Yeah. Okay. Okay, how do you know? Nigeria. Nigeria. Mr. Lucky, good morning. Um, good morning, my brother. Good morning. He proposes 10 years jail term for hate speech. Hey, my brother. Thank you very much. My name is Lucky. I don't know be Lagos. I don't know be Lagos. Uh, yes, um, in that area. Ten years and twenty million naira for hate speech. I think. Uh, let me just go back to 2014, 2015. If they want to pass that bill. We should go back and analyze, go back to 2015. Let's go to the speech that Buare made against Jonathan. Let's go to the speech that Lai Mohammed made against Jonathan. Let's go to this stony heaven, pure water. You remember that time? Everybody saw it, you always saw it. And Jonathan could pass a bill that would criminate single Nigeria. He could find him. They stone him, stone the vehicle, and Buhari made kind of noise that if he did not win that election, Nigeria would boy. That's his speech. Nobody. The only way, the only trying to do during this election, 2023, is to close our mouth. That's why they are going to pass that bill. But let me tell you, God will not allow them to pass that bill. God will never allow them, anybody, anybody that will even think that on his mind, God will take him off. That, that, that might, if they pass that bill, this might be a hospital. Let, let me tell you, my brother, anybody that will make that speech, that will even try that thing, God will take it off. That's not a speech. That's a prayer. The prayer is not a speech. I believe my brother. That's a prayer. That's a Solomon wisdom. Because you cannot pass a bitch stopping closing people's mouth not to talk. 
Because when we are hungry, he said we should not talk. When we are gathering to discuss how we are going to eat, he said we should not talk. They call it hate speech. I know the front corner person that is doing this is like Mohammed. What Bwari? No, Bwari did not know anything. What does it man know? He doesn't even know what is going on. He doesn't know whether people are hungry. He doesn't know whether they are kidnapping. He doesn't even know whether they are even killing. Because he has not come to even say, ah, this is what is happening in my country now where I am as a president. It's like all you know is that condolence. Every day condolence. Every day condolence. So the man didn't know what is happening. So I sorry for him that the few years that are remaining, God should just remove those leaders that cannot take care of the children. God's children. Okay. Let's look at ballot box snatchers with 20 years in jail. That is from the Senate. Uh, let them start from APC. The same thing go back to that 20, 2015. The same thing go back to 2015. Go back to 2019. All the election they hold, they had in Kogi. You know what happened in Kogi? Has a uh, police or even the APC government ever jail any person? Or the woman PDP, they went and burned his house. Did any people have some people? Did they arrest him? What are the people, they, what are the people they, they arrested? Have you said anything? Is there no more than hate speech? Has President brought the people, the perpetrator, who killed that woman, burned his house? Because he's not an APC member. So, what I'm trying to say is that all this is proposing jail time, jail time, jail time. Let them, they will use it to jail themselves. See, I'm here to pray this money. All this is they are proposing. They will use it to jail their children, jail themselves. I'm telling you the truth. I command them that anybody that proposing that will not even benefit Nigeria. What are you talking about? Things that have been Nigeria. Proposing, let God change them for life in the name of Jesus. That's the only thing. I come here to pray for them. Those wicked leaders this morning. I'm not here to speak grammar. I'm coming here to pray that those people don't want Nigeria to move forward. That proposing jail time for those ballot snatchers. Who are the ones snatching ballot? Who is managing police and army and SSS? In the same party, ruling party. They are the ones doing that, not the opposition. So anybody that is proposing to judge the opposition, to judge those who want to speak the truth to Nigerians, God, I command them, let that jail happen to them, not Jesus. That's it. I'm not here to just have mercy to anybody. Because the reason that we are angry, this is not what we're supposed to be talking about now. How to make people to eat, good health, go to school. That's what we're talking about. I'm telling you the truth. That's what we're talking about. I'm not here to say jail time. Because they are fond of doing that, the ruling party. They are the ones doing it. Go anywhere, go everywhere. They are the ones. So who is doing that? Under I witness it, I am not a party person. During 2015, there was free speech everywhere. Yes, now you can abuse, you can sue the president, you can put what type of president. Did the, did the president ever get up and said, let me make a hate speech? But today, you want to make a hate speech for who? For who? For yourself and your children. Not me. Because I'm here giving Nigeria what is going on here. Then you now call it a speech. So I command those who are proposing this thing that, that I should not talk, I should close my mouth. Let that thing happen to them. I beg, go ahead, give me another topic. Okay, as of rep, advises president to use mercenaries to fight insurgents. You see, any, any time heads of rep talk or see the president talk, I don't believe them because they are the same feather feather. They are the same thing. If President tomorrow bring out one bin, borrow 10 billion, 10 trillion, I give you, it's not a one week, they'll sign it. See this? Don't be surprised they bring, they should sign to kill the whole Nigeria. Like what? But I will sign it. So I'm not surprised at this. The president, which missionary? Which missionary? From outside to help us. Which uh, for where? Let me tell you. No outside person will come here. No even American will not come here. They will betray them. They will betray them. You don't remember what happened to Chibos girl? When the Americans are about to come, they told them that uh, <laughs> it's the same people, the same military, ten Nigeria that will expose them. So who is coming here? When we are boasting, we are of Africa. So uh, who is coming to help us? I listened to the president yesterday when uh, the Cameroon president 
saying that, uh, brother, I uh, thank you for bringing Carlo from uh, from uh, from my side. I was surprised. What concern us with uh, Cameroon? What Camer what concern? I remember Cameroon deport a lot of Nigerians. Why are we dealing with all this multiple country? I don't understand me. And president is happy still uh, that uh, Priggy Kalu, what does that go to do with uh, my, 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 my stomach? I don't understand me. So we have the uh, analog president, we have analog people who doesn't take away to Nigeria. People are suffering, people are dying. You are dying on the street. You are falling down in the street. You are dead. What's going to happen in Cameroon? That's a problem. We have that these people, they don't know what's happening tomorrow. They are not project tomorrow. They are not working for the children tomorrow. They only work for themselves. All they are saying is 2023. That's why they are bringing all this law. For us not to talk. For us not to say to, that, that, that I can close our mouth. My brother, this time around, I'm telling the youth, you will remain there lamenting. You will remain there dying hunger. This is the time to stop all this kind of thing. This is the time to march. How? How? How would it be? Like now, all this area of uh, hate speech. What kind of hate speech? Which you got there and stop them. Let them defy hate speech. Let them go back 2014, 2015, and let's see the speech that President made. And let's see the speech that Lagman made. made. Let's be the scene all these politicians made. Let's go and check them. Then we can start from there. Yes. You don't criminal people not to talk. We must talk. God give us not to talk. So in America, did you see what they did to Trump? Did you see what they, the people protest enter the Senate? They protest. Yes. So America make a provision, a place that people can protest and speak whatever their might. But Nigeria, we don't have that. My brother, that's not what we're talking about. What we're supposed to be talking now? How would Nigeria save? How would people save? Not all this drama they are doing in Abuja there. See them. Go Abuja now. You see people, conferences, party, birthday, everything, celebrating birthday. Why other states are suffering? People are dying, kidnapping. People are inside bush. You are just celebrating. You are telling me that I should not talk. My brother, I will talk. I will talk. If you want to kill me, I will talk in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Mr. Lucky. Good morning, uh, Mr. Tigosi. Yeah, good morning, Christian. Wow. Good, uh, and everyone. Good morning over the bill from the House of Senate saying that they are proposing 10 year jail term for hate speech. Also, uh, I think that is not news and uh, it has been uh, it has been rumored for quite some time now and of course they are doing everything possible to clamp down on people on medias and uh, so that Nobody will be there on ground to expose their atrocities. And uh, why we still believe we, we are in democratic uh, settings, which is a totally in contradiction with uh, democratic norms, so, which says uh, power to the people and for the people then it means the reverse, that you are indirectly taking away power from the people. Because when you talk about the people, you talk about the voice. People's, uh, has, people have the right to contribute to the process and art of governance, or it, policies that affect them directly or indirectly economic or social uh, wise so if you are saying that people can no longer be given that opportunity then you are totally calling for something total entirely different from what we we profess to have been practicing the democracy we copied uh, democracy from United States of America. We should also imbibe the tenets of democracy, not just copying. We should learn from the people we copied. We are, how were are they able to entrench unity in diversity? We have over 52 states, and a single state in America is more than uh, uh, Nigeria. Even in, in every uh, uh, consideration, 
and yet they are moving on with the system people are feeling better you see when they said that uh, nigeria is one of the most poorest country of the world it's, it's just not that in america there are no poor people you see but the majority over 90 percent of the nigerian citizens are poor not just poor it's abject poverty when you cannot feed uh, on a dollar one dollar per day that shows the level of uh, cruelty that have been method on the people okay. when you say in america there are poor people you don't compare them with there is no basis for comparison because over there you can afford the basic needs a average poor person in america cannot live below one dollar it's, it's impossible it can never be done because there are other social uh, security or social provisions that would cater for that but do you see that happening in Nigeria? The question is no, and it's impossible. It can't happen because of the the nature of the Nigerian system. See, we don't, of course, have a system. The nature of the parochial, the people within the corridor of power, who have no future. Yes, they don't have future because if you. They are the most victim. Uh, they are living in in denial and the fear of unknown. That's why they refuse to do the needful. And uh, it's unfortunate that we are trapped in this system that professes to be a democratic uh, setting. Why we see everything playing out suggests that uh, this is a a, a dictatorial uh, system or regime which everybody must rise against from your own context your own understanding what do you think hate speech is uh, the concept of hate speech you see you don't people has right to conscience and this expression of the opinion so it depends on the context i know the it is mischievous. People that coined out such words, they intended to do, mislead the people so that they can achieve their objective of climbing down on the people. We are talking of hate. What do you consider as hate speech? When the masses or the people are expressing their grievances or criticizing the government constructively or pointing out what and what should be done to remedy the situation and you you because you are not happy you, are, you didn't feel comfortable with such a expression you consider it hate speech it means such person will never move forward and will never learn so criticism is an aspect of governance when you because you can't be everywhere at every time People around you, your kitchen cabinet might be deceiving you, praising you, giving you false appraisal. Then you have to listen to the grassroots to understand their level of the predicament or what they are passing through, where you are not getting it, getting it wrong, or how your policies are, or economic uh, policies or social policies are affecting the people. And do you call that uh, hate speech? Then how do you get to know if people do not express their feelings through words? It's very unfortunate. Okay, let's look at um, the bill seeking to jail uh, ballot box snatchers for 20 years. Will that stop rigging the uh, rigging election? Will that, will that stop election, electoral practice? Well, you don't take an average politician, Nigerian politician, serious. They are just uh, circumventing, just rigmaroling, trying to avoid the the real situation. Uh, they want to push the blames probably to different quarters rather than accepting the fact that they have fared woefully. 
You see, I wonder the kind of uh, legislators we have. Is they have a misfit, and uh, it's unfortunate because the process that brought them to that chamber is a faulty uh, process. They never deserve to be a representative of the people. When you condemn the use, the transmission of ele uh, electionary uh, result outcome electronically, what are you, what are you then expecting? You see, when they are coming with a jail term, 20 years jail term, who are the people that will execute it, implement it? They are still the one. They will are the one to mobilize their own machineries and their thoughts to extort. And you will not be there. They are the one also to, as if just you are sending, you are just telling somebody to go and rob. And uh, you are the judge. to You preside over the case. And after the robbery, you'll be giving your own share. When the, the case is brought to your chamber, what do you do? Will you tell the person that you sent to do such? It is so, it is just uh, a jamboree, a political jamboree, and uh, it's just dead on arrival. The fundamental issues should be, what are the problems bedeviling the Nigerian states? How do we remedy such situation? We must uh, muzzle political strength and uh, willingness to tell the truth, to admit that they have failed, and uh, fail, not just failing, failing woefully, and apologize, attend that apology, uh, apology to the people, and probably resign. Okay, one more question. Uh, why are you saying that Nigeria is lucky to remain one despite challenges? What's your take on that? Lucky to remain one? Yes. On what basis? Is it, I think if that makes him better or if he's better in deception, fine. But let him walk on the streets of Abuja and see how secured he is without uh, his uh, guides. Let him walk the streets of uh, Castina without uh, any security uh, attached to him. Then let's see how safe Nigeria is. Let him walk the streets of Imo State without any security and let's see how secure he is. You see? He's just living in deception. Even in Castina, there has not been peace. You can see the level of adoption, even the EMEA was adopted. Across the entire region, of course, the National Assembly are suggesting that you should hire machineries to fight terror. Who, who are the terror? Terror group. Buhari himself is a problem of Nigeria. Buhari is a terror that has befallen Nigeria. How can you hire um, other machineries? Then let us hire it against himself. Are you hiring machineries to fight innocent people who are expressing their legitimate rights of self-determination? Or are you fighting people who are already hungry, who have been pushed, whose future has been ruined already, whose future and prospects has been damaged? You are hiring machineries which you are responsible for such ruins. You are responsible for their, 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 their level of uh, pain. You incur those pain on them. You keep on borrowing without any uh, commensurate uh, or reflection of what you, you use those money for. And people are crying. You lock up the entire borders within the southern region and opens other borders from uh, in the north. And you are telling us that the northern borders are porous, they can't be managed. Why you allow your Fulani uh, brothers to come across, come into Nigeria to unleash mayhem? So who are you hiring machineries? That's why I say people within the country, the senators and House of Representatives, they have no business being there. Because they lack the acumen, they lack the, 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 the brain 
to man such position. It's a lofty position. Unfortunately, we end up having pigs and people, not just all of them, but it's unfortunate that the majority are just, not just useless, but very disappointing. How would you, okay, are you machineries against your own citizens? This is, we, for we, crying loud, this is... We have the bandits, we have the bandits, hmm? we have uh, the kidnappers also. The kidnappers? We have the bandits in the north. What, what are the remote causes? That bandits are serving today because of the social mishap or economic mishap. People can no longer fend for themselves. There are no facilities to absorb them. There is no uh, opportunity created for people to strive. And what do you do? When you have nothing to fall back, you, you resort to violence. You, that constitutes nuisance. You are not trying to address what are the major problems that prompted, the, of course, they are the ones who gave them the guns. And uh, because of political gains, and at the end of the day, they never considered the consequences of their action, premeditated action. When the elections were over, there was no place to fix those people because there was no infrastructure, there was no question of job. You promised to create 10 million jobs, you ended up making the aggravating the situation and I mean subjecting people to the life of beggary. Your own citizens who gave you the opportunity. You voted over is it two billion or thereabout or more for your own feeding. While there are Nigerians who feed below one dollar per day. You see then how do you expect to have uh, justice? How do you expect people to keep calm? So these are fundamental issues. Those money, you cannot solve the problem of Nigeria with the barrels of gold. You feel like go and borrow more and borrow more billions of dollars, acquire more ammunition. You can't solve the problem. You are the problem of Nigeria. You created the monster that is threatening, terrorizing the Nigerian state. So you yourself, you are the problem of Nigeria, Buhari and the senators who refuse to do the needful, who refuse to play, I mean, to carry out the, the act of legislature in favor of the masses who gave them the opportunity. So it's quite unfortunate and there, there is no end to this because people, is, it has already escalated and people are angry. And when a hungry man is angry, you know the level of anger. So when people are depressed, depressed, look at what happened in Ladibo yesterday, where a group of uh, soldiers came and uh, started shooting Igbo business uh, uh, spare parts dealers sporadically. You see, this is a country that is that is no law, that is lawlessness. People can kill and get away with it. And you still want us to believe in one that Nigeria is lucky to remain as one. I think that is is living is in his own uh, deception. He's living in, a, in 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 the world of fantasy. Okay. Let him walk out the streets of Lagos without any guide, and let's see how secure he is. Okay, I think that was sent a very serious lesson. Maybe that is what he needed to learn, okay. the lesson of his life. Thank you very much. Nigeria is gone. The only way forward is Biafra. Thank you very much. Uh, we have Mr. Samuel, uh, the erudite, the emeritus. Good morning. Mr. Christian, yeah, this is your title. Good morning. Uh, I woke up this morning. Good morning, everybody. Senate passes bill saying that uh, 10 years jail term for hate speech. I want to ask one question. What do you understand? How can you define hate speech in Nigeria? Maybe we ask those that um, passed the bill. Well, okay, before before you. before I even go in, okay. yes, my name is Samuel Effiung, and um, okay, let me read something. Any person who uses hate speech to stir up ethnic, religious, or racial hatred, social or political insecurity or violence against anyone or group of persons, that means whatever speech that uh, stirs up ethnic, religious, or racial hatred, will be termed as hate speech. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Now, the question is, um, before now, are they saying that a country that um, existed for more than uh, 60 years does not have a law that deals with such? I'm just asking. So, you see, that's, um, the problem we have is um, lack of leadership. And um, it is a pity that um, the way we have political um, failure, political leadership failure, is the same way we have um, maybe somehow religious leadership failure. And it's the same way we have, um, it's like they have interrelationship, the failures of one leadership structure goes to the other one. And um, that is why we also have uh, leadership failure when it comes to economic leadership failures. Because now, if you're saying that a country for over 60 years does not have laws to take in place or to curtail people who bring up uh, ethnic violence as a result of their comment, then it is a pity that um, we've not been existing as a people that understands law or probably we've not been doing the right thing as a people. So it's laughable that um, after 60 years of independence, and um, the democratic dispensation came in around 1999 that we're just waking up for uh, over 20 something years old to now know that there's no law that is handling that it is a pity but i haven't said that no, the truth have is libel, we have slander. no the, 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 there are so many laws that has covered that area not just libel and slander if you read through the constitution there are so many laws that have taken care of that aside just libel and slander so these people just like i said they don't understand their left from their right they don't know what it is they don't know what the people want the laws they should pass first the first law that should be passed is that for every political office holder in the house of rep and in the senate should be placed just like the way the uk places their senators and their legislature and the way the u.s pays their senator and legislature or house of rep member so because nigeria is the highest paid of all the countries if not the second or third in the world and yet when you compare the living standard of the nigerian to the countries that pays their senator huge amount the gap is too much so you see people that um hypocrisy and greed and it is a pity that the same thing is applicable to our leadership structure. 80% of the companies I've known in Nigeria don't employ people and give them employment letter. Or 90%. I've worked in Lagos, I've worked in Port Harcourt, I've worked in the Delta State. So the same system that the political class uses is the same system that those who have companies use. Is the same system directly and directly like the religious uh, leaders somehow used to grab and grab and grab and collect to themselves and have jets and have jeep and have the children will fly. Then you see um, poverty is a rampage. So that's the situation we find ourselves and it is a pity. What do you say about the 10 years uh, jail time for hate speech and uh, 20 how, million era? How do you define what is hate speech? How? So if they can define what is this speech is fine. When uh, you criticize the government, and some people, maybe some from certain part of the uh, country, maybe because of their ethnic alignment or religious alignment, now decide to take upon themselves to attack another person based on your constructive criticism. So do not say it was your speech that caused the attack. How do you start rationalizing? How do you define hate speech? Who defines it? Who, is, who, who defines is it as a result of his position or as a result of his ethnic alignment, as a result of his religious alignment? So the president some years back said they will make uh, the, governor or the government ungovernable for President Jonathan. So can we now say that um, that has resulted to what is happening in the north or in the northeast? So the, as the president engaged in such act, so who will define what his hate speech? So is it as a result of when you're in power, your party structure can pick whoever comes out to criticize you and say, oh, it was because of your critic. And it's so, we run a system whereby you can criticize the government, just like what we saw in the answers. The government can sponsor another set of people to attack another set of people. Then they'll not say it was because of your statements that made them to attack this set of people, and they'll not prosecute you for jail time. And also, we run a system whereby you are, we've seen whereby people were protesting in this country. 
and another set of protesters was sponsored to attack them by the, by the same set of people, by the government, it was obvious now. There was a guy that was carrying machete, machete in Lagos. He's a political loyalist to some people and he's a known face. Have they apprehended him? Eh? But he was attacking the peaceful protester. Phone captured him. Television. And this guy might have registered in, uh, he has a SIM card. He registered in NIM. Have they arrested him? Has he been brought to book? So, you can come on and criticize the government on a particular subject of conversation. What the government will do within the same system, is a Nigerian system, anything can happen now. It's just to sponsor another set of people to go and attack people that was say, it was because of your statement that aggravated the situation. In fact, they will say you are the one that sent those people to go and attack maybe a group B. Now, they won't arrive the, the group A that they will claim you would have sent to. They will say there are unknown faces that claim that it was because of your statement. They went to attack social person. Then they will bundle you and take you to the court of law. So, who we, the same people that are making the law are the same ones that will arrest people, are the same ones that will influence the people to attack, are the same set of people that will come back and use money. You know, if you don't have money in Nigeria, you can't get a good lawyer. To politicize the system. So, where are we going in this country? That's the question we should be asking. Nigerians have even not done critics like what the U.S. have done to Trump. So it is a pity that um, I don't believe that the dark man world, the black world, is meant to be developed. Because what we're seeing every day is not a sign of development. The black man was not structured. You can is a is an open debate people have argued. But personally, even in countries that are Europe or that some white countries that the ones that have black coloration directly and directly go and check their pattern. There's always something wrong with the black man. Something is fundamentally wrong in Nigeria. Is a foundational, maybe it's a cause, or is as a result of making, or as a result of psychological thinking. Something is fundamentally wrong with the black man. And we need to be saying, I'm not a white man, but I'm telling you that. Not because the whites are perfect, or most of these countries are perfect. But out of the whole black nation, again, something is critically wrong, extraordinarily wrong with Nigeria. So except there's a spiritual cleansing or something tragic happens, Nigeria is not going anywhere. You can, you know, when it favors your people that have one alignment or primordial sentiment, Nigeria is really moving. It's okay. But subject it to the people. Look at people are passing carrying egg and everybody's living a miserable life, including those that have money. As at yesterday in Lucky Phase One, you can share the video. Someone I drove out from uh, the place is called Plumba, Plot 8, Providence Street. Immediately the vehicle drove out and we in the front of the gate. With my younger brother, I just came into the country. They said it's tax force. Open the vehicle, open the front of the car, because I was coming out with my laptop to join him. Open the car, jumped him, dragged him out. This is somebody that came in from an international flight. He's trying to avoid COVID rules. Dragged him out. Sir, ah, you've disobeyed the traffic rule. In an S-Lecky phase one, admiralty. So they now said, eh, tax force, eh, bring money. Eh, so, okay, how do we pay? Ah, we don't know. There's no way. We don't take, uh, we don't take transfer. Uh, bring cash, bring cash. Oh, yeah, guy, bring well, receipts. That's what the tax force said. I'm telling you categorically okay. what happened to me. It's cash? not, they don't, yeah, they take cash, they don't take transfer. Okay, okay bring your paper. There's no paper. There's no receipt. Now, the painful part was they made sure they delayed because we were carrying a food that we were supposed to give. Uh, my mom, she's a person. She was in the hospital as at that point. In time. We told the guy, you know what? Let us drop the food. Drive the car. You've taken possession of the car. So, in Nigerian tax force and internal generated revenue rules, you jump into people's car. There's no gap. But in St. Climbs, because we have people that travel, we'll be saying St. Climbs. Not all climbs are St. They give distance to where you stop the person and how you're going to park. They give you, you've offended this room. There is no parking in every part of Lekki, most parts. But on that same road, there's selective justice whereby some people have the monopoly to park. When you have them because they've been able to pay some people somewhere to take a possession of a part of the same, within the same Lekki estate. Then while on the other hand, you see some people can come that because they make up the kingmakers that brought out the tax force. And you see these people smelling with smoke and Indian all over their body. So I now ask one of them that is the traffic rule 
since now you are taxed for you know in Nigeria when you are in, po in politics you've known everything you own the monopoly to act anyhow I said so your own tax force you don't wear nose mask your tax force will don't have a meter whereby you stop people then you clear them to fuck so where is the no parking rule is it everybody that says where is the rule that lives in Lekki that when you come and deliver some of the drivers they caught yesterday only came to deliver goods for the first time in a road they've been flying for over 10 years there was no rule so you see they just wake up more money do anything let your tire and tell you that ah, there's a legal government rule uh, law that says immediately you don't do this it's not. so that's the kind of black man stupid system we run so nigeria has never run anything that is lucrative that is sense making so that's the kind of the people that nigerians are and you can't take it away from those who don't want to be part of a stupid system a system that is not working a system whereby you get to other airports of the world the way they will usher you in the way you 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 will be happy that They will say that is the best you can have. Ah, this hey Lagos. I said if Lagos is like this, then the other part of the country is in hell. Rubbish is what we practice. So, and the Senate passing that kind of law. Why they can't pass law against open grazing that have constituted more killing, more harm than people's expression? Why the same Senate cannot pass law? to enact within their political caliphate those that have stealing so well from the system that their children considering a peculiarity should go to our public schools that no political office holders should take their children to go and to take himself to london or Twitter. how many times have you seen the president of uh, the prime minister of uk come to nigeria for medical treatment it is only a black man a nigerian that will do that because the country is made up of stupid political sorry political allies that don't have intellect that don't know their left from right so how would you go to london and you're a poor economy you're flying in your capital flight you're taking money to another man's country where they have a more stabilized economy so you now see people talk about theoretical underpinnings whereby you're supposed to safeguard your economy and build institutions build good hospital so you now ask me that in same time that people really want to stay in that kind of environment when you can get a better environment somewhere else no stupidity is that those kind of statements is made up of stupid statements like if you're giving the avenue to go to syria or even south africa would you say nigeria nobody wants to say so when you see those kind of system so which logical human being will want to see that kind of system whereby you'll be driving and somebody there was no notice that there shouldn't be youth on in most part of Lagos. Go and check the oppression of last month. Go and check in other parts of Lagos. There are mere traffic rules that you should have enlightened the people about. I just noticed this in, in every part of Lagos. But they'll go and hide somewhere. Ask people. Ask bus drivers. Then they'll jump into a private vehicle. Right in your presence, you will see another vehicle, bus. Because most of them own the bus and the bus have a tip, tipping system to pay them. So they'll jump. So you don't tell somebody like me. I haven't seen that system and what is obtainable in South Africa in developed climes. I'll, I'll rather sweep in South Africa, sweep in London, than to claim because we've seen sweepers. We have classmates, graduates from Nigeria. I finished from Abafemi Awolowo University, and I have friends that are doing cleaner in Dubai and they are living a better life than those working in bank in Nigeria. So you can't say you see those kind of archaic, sentimental. The decisions of even the people making the decisions know that the decisions are stupid. So you now encourage people to sit in that kind of environment. No, that's stupidity. So you wouldn't blame those who have, haven't seen the system to clamor for a separate entity. You are by they will confront those in power to tell them that see, if this is what you want to do, you're not going. It's not going to work. It was easy for the southwest to confront and want to Is it not in? Uh, is it not from? Uh, uh, our lawyer is from Jabu, yeah? 
he can or whatever is it, shall, uh, say he's not far. They will go and confront him there and confront his family. It is difficult to do that in the current setting, whereby some people will interpret that action as hate speech. So is it not more sensical, common sensical that one system will be more efficient to give all the dividends of democracy and we'll all move down to Niger Delta and face the governor in his village and burn it down with his gun? But can we do that? When the governor will tell you that some people are controlling uh, the police, his handicap, which Rationally, if you look at it on our ground, it's true. So the system will encourage even the governor to do wrong because there's somebody in Abuja that will cover him up and send military. So it's not sense making. So nobody can continue. See, if for those listening, if you see a cleaning job, cleaner, I don't need office job. I have, I will go. And I'll take nothing less than 1,000 graduates. If I upload it on my Facebook page from my class, so many jobless graduates, oh boy, send me 2K. 1,000 era, 2,000 era. In the same country. So in the process of trying to open one small shop or one kiosk, is either there's no electricity for you to go on with the business, or they'll just wake up and want tax or they can demolish the whole of this place and for sure everybody away. So every day, the actions of those in government is always frustrating those who are trying to be legitimate. That is why the youth now find it very difficult to blame their counterpart who has found other fraudulent means of making money. See, a classmate of mine said, the Yahoo boy, Baba Yahoo of Emunye, meaning that the Yahoo guy that they want to catch me, I don't know him. He's the one that sent him 10,000 naira when he was looking for his job. And his shoe, one side of the shoe has bent. So the Yahoo boy that is doing the legitimate business that we all know is the one financing because you that you are doing the legitimate business, you don't even, you are not even being paid salary. 30,000 naira, you pay transportation, you, pay. you are not even paid the 30,000 naira in the first place. So that is the country we find ourselves. So when you see people say, ah, the country, uh, UK is difficult. UK has never been difficult. There is no part of Europe that is ever real, I repeat, that is ever difficult, that will ever, ever, in human existence be difficult than the Nigerian state. Whereby you see people with writing talent. I have a classmate that is first class degree. He's a teacher, a friend, and his salary is 30,000 naira. First class. First class. I See, do you have anybody that wants to give them a job? I have them up to three, no one. First class is from a kitty state. And you, in the same vein, we have people that maybe third class because they know somewhere that know somebody somewhere. So the legislatures are not focused in addressing those key issues that is affecting the masses. So that is the greedy system whereby you can't be rational and want to sit in that kind of hell a country. So you can't take it away from people who call the country zoo. You can't take it away from them. This is the only country whereby rats drove away the president from office, rodents. It's online. It's in the public domain. This is the only country whereby monkeys swallows money. Is there any other country in human existence that you've read or you've heard? Even on the news in CNN, that monkey swallows money. And Kano, chimpanzee, swallows money. Jump office, snake, swallowed money. Where well, you know in this country. So if you now look at that, as rational, as, as young looking as you are, will you want to do the mistake like my father said he did mistake? Because he had an avenue to have run away. Even if it's South Africa, but it thought the country will be better. And the statistic on ground has shown that the worst is yet to come. If this is the kind of law, some certain, certain, people, some certain people are passing in 2021. It is a pity that the second version of death, which simply I define as the working of men in a physical world, without an impact psychologically, physically, socially, emotionally, to themselves or to their family members or to their society at large, is what has characterized the Nigerian political landscape and the youth majorly. The youth are all dead. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Mr. Samuel, that is Mr. Samuel, has spoken uh, well. Spoken well. We are having a campaign here in front of us. APC are having their campaign. And also, I think it's a, pra, a primary campaign. Odubaku is doing his campaign. Okay, let's uh, have Mr. Raphael. Good morning. Sir. Yeah, good morning. Sir Raphael, they have come with another bill proposing 10 year jail term for hate speech. Uh, the first person to, to serve 10 years jail, the first person to have entered that trap is Lai Mohammed. When he has been saying all manner of things against the Igbos, when he has been getting the Igbos by his speech, he is the first person to go to jail. When Lai Mohammed has been lying and lying to Nigerians, lying and lying to people in diaspora and abroad, 
it is very very abominable for a man in that position mm. to be telling lies considering his age are you listening to me the, the second person to go to jail as a result of head speech is the grand the chairman of mighty allah across west africa the mighty allah has been lambasting nigerian ethnicities other ethnic tribes in nigeria for over four years now four years since 2017 mighty allah okay head speech the number second number second two person to go jail is Meti Allah chairman, spokesperson, or president, or whatever he call himself. Is it Tango Abdullahi? I don't know. It's uh, Kore. Thank you. He should go to jail first for telling the whole world that Fulani is the best tribe in Nigeria, that the land of Yoruba, the southwest land, belongs to their forefather, Osman Danfodio, that the southeastern Nigeria belongs to their forefather, Osman Danfodio. That they full and they are the best people in Nigeria. That they are they were born to rule. So I wonder why they are making such law while they have the culprits, people that are culpable all around them, surrounding them in the house of Rev. National House of Assembly, as a rock. The number third person to go jail as a result of this bill is Buhari himself. Why should Buhari be taunting and tormenting other tribes? Buhari has come out to tell us that the outcome of South uh, Southern Governors uh, Forum meeting, those the, those Southern Governors that met in our uh, first of uh, last month uh, in that state could not stand somebody's land. You force it on him, open grazing. Do you know the Do you know what legalization stands for? absolute hate, more than hate speech. You are trying to impose that kind of law on people, on another tribe. You invited your brothers from Mali, your brothers from Burkina Faso, all over West Africa to steal Igbo man's land, to grab your woman land, to, he has grabbed the whole mid belt land. See, what is happening in the middle belt? Kaduna is the mid belt. Kaduna is not Connaught. The killing in Southern Kaduna, let me tell you, in three months, 221 people were slaughtered by Fulani Hesmen, masquerading themselves as bandits and kidnappers. Let me tell you, the bandits you are seeing today in Nigeria are Fulani Hesmen in disguise. So what does he portray? It is worse than her speech. You come out to tell us that you are number one citizen, that Ibo man is the last class, cast. You are the first. Ibo man is the last cast. Fulani man is number one. Ibo man is the last cast, followed by Yoruba. What does he portray? It's worse than his speech. So, Buhari should go and serve. If it is 20, they will make it another, they will add it 20 and not additional. 40 years, Jeff Tenor. You make law, you flout it. Why should you flout the law you make? You, you make? You make law. I think the Senate are the ones making this law. Thank you. They are, they are, they are in government, of course. If the executive is not happy with what the senators legislate, I don't think it will, it will be a very, very, uh, you know, uh, applicable. I don't think people can apply that to that law. So they are all in government. They are all in government. If it is legislators that are making the law, why is it that the executive always, you know, tell them what to do? Legislatives, are they not rubber stamp? What are you telling me? Lawan Ahmed said that anything Buhari brings to his table is going to sign it. So tell me how comes the senators are making law in Nigeria. They are not the ones making law in Nigeria. The people that are legislating for us are the executive office of Mr. President at Asuro. They are the ones. So that kind of law, rule and regulation, is targeted to at uh, social media. They are talking about media. So that you say anything wrong, they will come and carry. Let me see how many people they are going to jail in 10 years. See, they should go and build prison, construct new prisons. The one that is larger, bigger, in dimension, size, eh, than Oko prison. Kuja prison. 
about chemical prison. I want them to go and construct 10 times the size of those prisons I mentioned now. Because Nigerians are trooping there. We make hate speech every day. In the house, there is hate speech. If we bring any bill that will follow Ibo man, our someone will say, Kai, Chege, Obanka, bro, that is hate speech. Any bill that will favor Ibo man, South Easterners, houses in the house will stand up. Hate speech in the house there. What are you saying? It cannot see. Hate speech can never, ever all go well in this our society now. Because it is in our character. Okay. It is wrong to do to make such into to pass such bill into law. Because we commit hate speech every day. Hate speech in Nigeria, when Yoruba does not like Igbo, Igbo does not like Hausa, Hausa does not like Igbo. Fulani does not like Hausa. Igbo does not like Fulani. Fulani does not like Yoruba. Hate speech. Prepare. We are going to prison. Nonsense. They go there just to legislate any law for their own selfish interest. They don't want us to talk because they are selling money. That's why they are coming up with hate speech bill. They want whatever they do, it stands. See, look at the salary they are, at, they, are, they, are, they, are they are going home with every month. You legislators, I commit another hate speech here. You are all bastards. You are stealing our money. That is, that is harsh. That's no, no, it's not harsh. harsh. They are bastards. They are bastards. bastards. They are, they are they idiots. They are making law they and they are flaunt the law. They are flaunt. They are the same people that flaunt the law. What are you telling me? They make hate speech there. So, let me tell you, what hate speech is, bi is bigger or better than the fact that teachers who taught them are receiving only 30,000. This personal non gata are cutting away home millions of Naira as salary every month. Who taught you? Who taught her? Who, who taught me? I was taught by teachers. You were taught by teachers. The legislatives, legislators, they were taught by teachers. What are you saying? What kind of law is that? They make it, of course, so that we close our mouth. They make it, of course, so that they will black out on social media and even uh, media houses. Nobody should talk again. What are you telling me that they are not pastors? Okay. See, let me tell you. Let everybody go to jail. Let's move over. Uh, another bill again. Uh, ballot box snatchers, uh, 20 years in jail. Would that solve electoral malpractice? Ah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. They make the law, they violate it. They are the ones that you, they are the ones that are going to send those talks to steal the ballot box. Ballot box are not stolen by ordinary Nigerian that went to vote. Ordinary common man in the street cannot snatch ballot box. Ballot box snatchers are being sponsored by the same lawmakers, politicians. The senators that are make, legislating this law, eh? how did they get to the house? I said, how did they get to the house? Is it not by ballot snatching? Did any one of them outrightly win election? My brother, the legislators that are legislating this law now, did they go to the house in orderly manner? Okay? They snatched ballot box. That's why they find themselves in the house. They sponsor ballot, ballot snatchers. They gave them money. They risked their life. They did the job for them. Now they are trying to fool you and I. We are not fools. I was not born yesterday. Yeah? Neither did I. Where I born? Was I, where am I born today? How did I put it? Where are you born today? Uh, I'm not born today. I was not born yesterday. So you can only fool a man without praying. Okay? Ballot snatchers, are they not their sponsors? Ah, this is question. We can't have credible election in Nigeria if you like make it 20 years because the same people that make the law, they are the ones that fund ballot snatching. We are not fools. Another man like me, another man like Kule, you, Chuku, you cannot sponsor ballot snatchers. The same people that are in the house sponsor those people that are snatching ballot boxes across Nigeria during election. Every electionary processes, they twat it, they bend it, they make it crooked, 
they are coming out to make a law against such activities, illegal activities. Such crime is a crime. They are the one. It's a crime. Oh, do you understand? It's a electioneering crime, uh, electioneering crime, and it is being sponsored by same people in the house, the National House of Assembly. Now they have come out with this kind of law. They are the ones sponsoring it. Ballot snatchers cannot go and snatch without legislators giving them money. Because they are working hard to be there so that they will make their millions. When a man wins election in Nigeria, he carry all his kinsmen, they go to the altar and go thank God. Why are they thanking God for? When a man is embarked on a very, very ardent task, he has to do what? He will work assiduously, diligently to satisfy the people. And that is called humility and the stewardship. Why are they going to call, to altar to celebrate? To celebrate stealing, thievery, any law. They flout it. They go against it. Ordinary Nigerians, we don't break law. Okay, the lastly, how a uh, house asked Buhari to fight insurgency with mercenaries? Uh, mercenaries are... Whoa! Let me tell you, mercenaries is buying people outside the country. Do you understand? To come and fight for you. And you use money to do that. If you, if you invite the British or the Americans to help your forces, your military forces here, to fight, make sure that you have a swollen account because you must pay. So inviting mercenaries to help us has exposed Nigerian military inferiority. Nigerian military inferiority. We are not in charge in Africa anymore. Egypt has taken over Egypt and South Africa. Look at Nigeria, the whole Nigeria. All of us know our military, how consistent they are, how powerful they are on this continent. Now, we have resorted to buy mercenaries outside to help us fight insurgents. Don't you see that we have failed? We can't go and buy mercenaries, of course, because we have, we have the military. We have soldiers that are good on shooting civilians. When NSAS protesters are protesting at the toll gate there, they mow many of them down with flags. They mow them down. So why buy mercenaries? It is stupidity. That was stupidity. I'm not in support of that. I can never go with that. I can never be. I can never be in support of Nigeria. Going outside to buy mercenaries. How would they? Because they are going to spend money. How would you? Do we have money. The end of any of insurgency starts from them. Now. If Buhari wants his surgeons to stop, now it will stop. Ask me why. He invited them. Because of hatred. Because of hate speech. I will make Jonathan's regime ungovernable. They should go back and arrest him. Yes, that statement. Worst hate speech. Worst hate speech of our time. If you commit a crime 40 years ago, you know, of course, in the States, later it will come after you. 40 years ago, they will track you down. You can't answer for it. What are you saying? Something that just happened 2011. How many years now? 10 years. They should arrest Buhari because he committed head speech. How could you have the insurgency that you started? You are their uncles. You are their father. Okay, let me tell you. There's no way we can end insurgency by buying mercenaries outside Nigerian shore. Let me tell you, we stop it ourselves. We can end it ourselves. Ask every imam there, ask every El Rufais, ask every Chetima Yerima and every Malami in the north. They know the best vignettes and techniques to stop insurgency in Nigeria. They, fought, they, they funded it, they invited them over to assist them to remove Jonathan from office. Now it has turned against them. I'm telling you, we can stop insurgency by ourselves. We are not going to buy mercenaries outside Nigeria because we are the one that orchestrated the fire of insurgency in the first place. Thank you, Mr. Chuk. Thank you very much. Um, uh, sorry, my you. brother. I was carried away there, man. Good morning, we uh, yeah, good morning Christian. Uh, let's look at Thanks for the good job uh, you yeah, did. Yeah, his speech bill. 10 yeah. years jail term, 20 million naira for his speech. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying now. Uh, luckily, that is what I'm just discussing with some people there now that the next thing now is they are going to buy plaster and seal up our mouths to talk so that we should we are going to buy plaster to seal up our mouth so that we show them that before you gag us we have already know where you just to mock them up because who are the people carrying the hate speech the hate speech is coming from this so-called leader they are proposing 
this, 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 this tyranny policy on us. We need to talk. When, we need to engage the government. We need to talk. So when they talk favor you, that's not a, a speech. But when they go against your wrongdoing, that is when it becomes a speech. I don't think that we'll be able to stand. Because here now, the police, you know, you can see there's a political rally going on here now. Some people will still make a speech against the opponents. It's fun. The politicians are fond of it. So what they're saying now is the, 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 the slave, the slave is trying to set himself free from the captive. And they are now looking at this slave must not be free. Let's cage that gate very well. Let's get, cage that prison very well so that the slave will not be able to escape. That's the situation on ground now. They say that we are more, we are getting more organized on the social media. They say that we are getting more organized uh, through the news, uh, you know, papers, reports we, we listen to and we read every day. So when they kill those, you know, formats we use, you know, to, 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 to converse, I mean, they, 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 they want to just kill us alive when we are still alive. Because when, once you are alive, you see seen things, you see seen things, you are not blind, you are not dumb, and you cannot speak out. What does that mean? It's better for you to be dead than being alive and be dumb to me. But his speech is said to have caused ethnic and uh, religious crisis in Nigeria. Who are the, who are the originator of the hate speech? Who are the originator of the hate speech? When some group came up that they own Nigeria, they own, they are the landlord of Nigeria. Is that not hate speech? Not classify it that way. Is that not hate speech? I think you are aware when the statements, some of them made the statement that they are the owner of the Nigeria. The majority of the landmass of Nigeria belongs to them. I think you should, let's weigh things with uh, the common sense God gave us. And I, I believe that common sense is not really common in this country we have now. Because when you're talking of air speech, the, 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 the air speech is like you are tr trying to right, demoralize other people with the word of your mouth. And what, how did it happen? I could remember that the, the, there was a plate number in Nigeria then that carried Bonturu, which was Sokoto State number. You could remember, under the regime of Obasanjo was when he stopped it. I don't want to see anything like that. You are born to rule. That means the other people are born to serve. They are born to be slaves. So you could see there are different, you know, hate speech level that's been going on. Yeah, we in the south here, yeah, we just don't take cognizance of all these things. Hate speech started from the people that trying to impose fine on the hate speech. Just first of all, check themselves before they wreck themselves and before they look at others to follow suit. Okay, 20 years imprisonment for ballot box snatchers uh, has, uh, to be passed in, in, the, in the house also. And 20 years, uh, you know, Jason. Jason. Who are the ballot box snatchers snatching ballots for? Ballot papers for? Who are they working for? No, Christian, let's understand one thing. You see, the master is there. The masters are the one making that law. I think the bill is in National Assembly now. Majority of them, any one of them that is so can be a saint, that can tell me is a saint, that they have not rigged election for him before. It's, you know, political stunt now in Nigeria is the most lucrative job. After political, you know, because you have access to treasury, to loot the treasury. After that is the bandits. Second lucrative job in Nigeria now is the bandit, banditry. So you want to tell me, those bandit, let's even assume they give them amnesty. They will not work for some politician. You want to tell me in the South here, who are the people sending those boys to go and hijack balances? Because of peanut. It's between life and survival. It's between poverty and survival. When they promise you, this is bring wretched, hungry looking person. Say, can you do a dirty job for me? Then I have 50,000 for you. I have 20, even 20,000. Go and snatch ballot box there. What will that, that angry man do? Follow, hungry man do? Follow them and up and You see, there is no law that they can pass that will work in this country. All the people that are behind the law, that are passing the law, they are not upright. They are not disciplined. They are not, they, 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 they are not, there's no ideological sense in them. 
So we need an upright leaders in this country. And since any day we start getting an upright leader, this country will be well. But all the leaders we have been having, they are just, I mean, they are jokers to me. Because they are not they don't really mean the business of governorship governorship. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Akunle. Yeah. Thank you. Lord. I appreciate you. Yes. Now, I'm have just a few minutes because of this sound. Yeah. Good morning, introduce yourself. Uh, uh morning. I am Mr. Akpara, but before I go ahead, I'd like to thank God Almighty. Father Yahweh, God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that created heaven and earth, that thank you for making it possible for all of us to be alive. I particularly to be alive. All of our viewers are brought to be alive. I thank you for keeping this nation. I thank you on behalf of Mazin Ma Ma Nam Kalo. I thank you is alive. I thank you on behalf of IPOB, uh, Simon Epa. I thank you because of Simon Epa. Daddy, and every single forgive, we are, we are committed. Forgive us, for we are mortal human beings. Have mercy upon us and forgive us our sin. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I am Mr. Akbara, the new Okokon in the Second Biafra Republic, lead by Mazin Nam Dekalo and his government and his IPOP government of Biafra. Long live Republic of Biafra. Long live Republic of Biafra. Long live Republic of Biafra. Long live Mazin Nam Dekalo. There's a bill that uh, for hate speech will be given 10 years jail term for hate speech. You see, Nigerian, the present regime, is trying to do anything to nail down, to nail down their Christies. People who tell them what they're doing is wrong. They are out for enemies to get them down. Is it her speech, the problem of Nigeria, that how many years now, uh, National Assembly and the uh, 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 executive and the judiciary and bend, bend, bend their neck on it to make sure they implement her speech. Is it the only problem of Nigeria? How does her speech related to Nigerian problem? They knew that what they are doing is wrong. They knew that they are on the wrong path. And the, the head correction, without criticizing you, how can you correct your mistake? And that's what I'm saying. Her speech is mean. Don't criticize, don't criticize me. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Whatever I'm doing, I am right. I am the Alpha and Omega. That is your understanding. That's what they're saying. That's what they're trying to prove to us. So trying to implement her speech is to nail you and me on the ground. Nail the social media on the ground. Nail the other mediums, medium uh, organization on the ground. Where we like to hear from other people's nation. Okay, what is news? You want to hear anything news? You don't want to hear anything news? Now, you want to implement 10 years for her speech so that when you steal money, we cannot talk that you steal money. Okay, if you implement her, uh, 10 years for uh, imprisonment for her speech, what of the people that embezzle money? What of you sitting in Asso Rock, sitting in Senate, sitting in rep, embezzling money? What will you do to you? So you don't want come on to talk again. As the police came last time and to demonstrate about the delay of payment and allowances for over seven months now in Casina. Government don't want to hear that. I said it yesterday that this is military in a civilian in the name of democracy. Let, let, let me tell you, if there's no criticism or her speech, democracy is valueless. Because it's what we speak out. Make, demo make it a be democracy. What is democracy? Government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And when you kill, when you don't want us to speak about the current affairs, which means we're not more, no more in a de democratical era. That's what I'm saying. Which means the government is no more of democracy, of the people, by the people, and for the people. Now, it becomes a government of do as I say, otherwise I kill you. Otherwise I jail you. That's what we are about to enter now. Government where anarchy will be going on, and nobody will speak that this is anarchy. Go a government where something will be getting wrong, and nobody will speak out.
and something is getting wrong, whether you like it or not. We are now entering the time of Idi Amin of Uganda. This government is becoming a government of the time of Idi Amin of Uganda. It is becoming the government of Emperor Bukasa of Central African Republic. It is becoming a government of Papa Doc of Hanchi in the 60s that end up in 70, in 71. It's becoming a government of Pharaoh that don't want to hear word. It's becoming a government of Nebuchadnezzar that made himself Lord of Babylon. If you look at it, in short, it's a very shameful thing. What is happening in Nigeria? That if Nigeria is getting to Africa, if we're behaving like this, what do you want other Africa to emulate from us? If you are so corrupt, and we don't want, we don't want anybody to talk, talk about our corruption, then what do you think other Africa should emulate from us? How are we giants of Africa? Where we don't want to receive correction. But let the government know, as I said, how government of India mean and the other. Let this government to know, as I said, how government of Emperor Bukasa of Central Africa end up. Let this present regime know how Papa Doc of Hanti end up. Let the present of government know how Samuel Doe of yesterday end up. People are tyrant. You know, in, 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 in Liberia, when Samuel Doe was alive in the, in the power, as we are speaking like this, we take the camera, trace our face, trace our yard, come and kill us secretly. But how did it end up? This is why you see people are struggling. I don't want to be in Nigeria again. Let me go on my way. Let me do this. How can you live in the country you are in? You are a slave. You have not to say. Eh? You have not you have not to say. Rather, people that carry gun, entering village, killing people anyhow in the name of Lani Hesman, have authority to do whatever they want to do. But to you, all you are speaking, they are trying to nail you down. How can okay, now? If you nail me down because I am crying of Lani Hesman are killing me, then which means you support them to continue. And those people that are murderers, you haven't able to do anything to nail them down. But me that they're crying, that you want to, they are killing you, don't kill you, then I'm doing that question her speech. Because I tell you, Mr. President, checkmate your trap men, that they become her speech. I tell you, Mr. President, you are not governing us well, you become her speech. And Mr. President, stop looting our oil sector, you become her speech. As long as that we are crying, give us our own fair share. You cannot get the large quantity and go and put, 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 put people are not producing the money. We are producing the money. You keep us barren. We are suffering hungry or hunger. If you come here speech, that's what they're trying to avoid. For them now, when they start saying, ah, Mr. President, we continue for the third time. Nobody will talk. All of us agree. Then he, he become a monarch that will rule, rule forever. As far as he said, they are born to rule. They cannot rule us. That's what they're trying to tell us, that they don't want to hear that we know we want to be better. This is why we are crying to be Biafra. Watch every Biafran man. By nature, we are Republicans. By nature, we have right to by our nature to speak out. That is our own legitimate right given from God. That is our own culture. That is our own behavior. That is our own education. When something is wrong, we come and speak out. This is why we don't have Lord, but we have spokesmen. In Biafra land, we don't have Lord. We have a spokesman. If you send you to go and speak on our behalf, if you go there and mess up, when you come, we draw you. Send another person. But not Lord. You Lord us until we die. Nobody will talk. This is what I'm trying to do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. I am Mr. Okokondem. In this Second Republic of Biafra, lead by Mazin Nam De Kalo and his IPOB government, long live Republic of Biafra. Long live for because Biafra, I'm not Biafra. On a rap on a rang, on your drop of blood, change the change when you lay. Mazin Nam Dekalo, Kachina Kira Nanyeregi, Chebe Gindo, Ega Gindo, Emege Emege Gindo, Ega Apta Nudo, Lido Biafra. Naha Jesus Christ, Amen. Okay, uh, Mr. Taibo, Odilade, and Savia Perez, uh, they have been called uh, social media bandits.
And uh, Tai Wadulade said that uh, you need to be part of the government, so as to change the government. How do you be? How do you become part of a structure that is, however, from uh, my uh, <laughs> meditus here, yeah, Samuel? Say, he said that a structure that is uh, determined, that is organized to fail, a structure that is uh, anti failure. Anti-progress, I mean to say. Let me call somebody. I want to say one or two things there. Uh, yeah. Now, um, le let me summarize this. In order to respond to some of the comments, um, when you start seeing people not using their real name in some social media platform to push some certain position, especially for government, note that there's something wrong somewhere. Now, on the other hand, how do you start being part of a system whereby do you know more denomination for me? This is a political rally right behind us. Do you know more denominations for me for local government chairman? Do you know what it takes for most youth to participate in governance? Do you know the numbers that have been killed in ordinary protests? Do you know the numbers? So when you see that kind of system, you see somebody, let that person to come, let us all contest together. Let that person to come, let him buy form. So if that person is sincere to himself or her, if not for some reasons or for some paid, we have so many of them in different platforms. I've said this over time. In Lagos and other parts of the country, they push for an agenda of what is not rational. So what you should ask them is from everything you've seen in the country, what has really worked? If you are saying the oneness of the country is okay, cool. What has worked? So what is the yardstick? But the truth is, if you do a sample opinion of everybody on the same platform, you will understand those that have been paid to do a particular job and they are doing fine. But if you subject it to a vote, will they win? That's the common ground. So will everybody have a, a entitled to their opinion, considering where they are coming from and who is paying who and whose position or ethnic alignment or religious alignment or political affiliation. So that determines a lot of things. There's no way the youth can participate in this kind of archaic structure. Has the vote ever been counted? Mm. Where the youth go on and they burn down. We know what happened in Ago in the last election. In certain parts of the country, we know our elections are being collated. We know some people don't want electronic voting to work. So what do you think the youth are foolish? Except you want to die young. So those who want to come out, be in a system, buy the phone for some of us, and also stand. So when they shoot, they shoot at those people who run at the amount of social media because they are paid to do a particular job. Thank you. Thank you very much. If the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? That's my last uh, uh, statement for today. Okay, thank you very much. The man behind the camera he has been standing. Thank you, Mr. Femi Davis. A big thank you. And also, I'm Christian Chico on this wonderful edition of the program. We are on uh, Instagram, Flip TV on Instagram, also on Facebook, E247. We are having pundits also uh, do well to uh, watch pundit by 3 p.m today and uh, we are saying it's going to be a wonderful experience hosted by uh, Mr. Samuel. Uh, bye for now to tomorrow as we do this uh, once again in the morning.